welcome back to my YouTube channel and to my train room. Over the past few weeks, I've installed the control systems on the Northern Pacific layout in the garage. It's been a bit of a process, a bit frustrating at times too. It's taken a lot longer than it should have done because the whole system was full of problems, which I've had to solve along the way. Anyway, let's turn the camera around and take a look at what I've been doing. This layout involves a few firsts for me. The customer sent me an NCE control system, which I've not used before. All my DCC experience has been with Digitrack, so I've got to learn this system. And there's a whole bucket of assorted circuit boards, which is all very intimidating at the moment. I have done a little bit of experimentation and I think I've figured out how it goes. What I can't do just yet is test anything because the auxiliary 12 volt power supply was sent to me without its cable. So I've ordered another one of those and hopefully that will get here by the time I'm ready to install circuit boards. Well, I have been having a lot of problems with these Cham Valley Quad LN circuit boards. Uh, not because there's anything wrong with the boards, but because they had been pre-programmed before I got them. A lot of the settings have been changed to things that weren't working. Anyway, I've reset it to factory defaults and it's now kind of working. So I've got four servos hooked up to this board. And they're all four working. One quirk that I do have right now is that servos one and four will only work with the main IO and servos two and three will only work with the auxiliary IO. So I'm still going to have to monkey with it some more. The customer is sending me his local buffer and I'm going to have to get into JMRI and, re and figure out how to reprogram these. Well, the last few days have been a little bit frustrating, but I'm making some progress now. Eventually I discovered that these fancy fascia controllers that were supplied for this project are not compatible with the Tam Valley servo controllers. So what I did, I've hooked up a, a temporary momentary push button here and that works reliably. So I've purchased enough momentary contact push buttons to do the job temporarily and some ribbon cables so that I'm not destroying all of his extension cables. So I'll get on with that later. I've mounted the boards on squares of plywood. The reason for that being that these tiny screws in the corners and the necessary spaces behind the board are difficult to install while I'm fighting gravity working above my head. So this way I can do it in the comfort of the workbench and then I can just put some small drywall screws through the plywood, hold it in place and just zing it in with the drill. So it's a lot easier to do it that way. Anyway, the fun and games doesn't end here because I only have 10 of these small servos. He sent me 30 brackets, which in theory is enough to do the whole layout. But of course, most of them have to be done with the big servos which don't fit the brackets. So I'm gonna to have to go and build some out of styrene. These servos come with a small bag of assorted hardware. It has a choice of several different cams, the mounting hardware, and a little screw to attach the cam. I'm using the straight one first thing to do is to shape the activating rod. I'm using the music wire that came with the kit. I'm not quite sure what gauge it is, but I need two bends, both slightly more than 90 degrees. Then I insert the wire through the last hole in the can. And then once it's through, I'm going to crimp the end of it down to grip the cam like that. 
and this bend needs to be slightly more than 90 degrees so that the wire slopes towards the base of the servo. Before I attach it, I'm using the Tam Valley centering tool. And there we are, that is now ready for a mounting bracket, which I'll have to make. And that's six assembled, 20 something more to go. Well, before I can mount any of these large servos, I have to build mounting brackets because the plastic ones that I was given only work for the small servos. I've printed out some pictures of the standard Tam Valley plywood bracket and I'm going to basically duplicate that in styrene. I've come up with a slight modification in the design. With styrene the joints are going to be stronger so I don't need in to cut any of these tabs so I think I can make them quite quickly. I'm making all the parts out of 80,000 styrene. I'm going to batch produce 20 of these brackets. In theory I only need 18 but if I've got a couple of spare ones I'm still covered just in case one or two of the small servos don't work because I have two spare servos for this project. Well, I now have all the parts ready to start assembling them. I have my base plates, which I've pre-drilled. I've drilled a clearance hole for a number six screw in each corner, and then two small holes, a little bit off center. The activating rod will go through one of the two. I've drilled them both. That way I can put the servo in either way around, depending on where it fits best. I haven't pre-drilled the holes in the mounting plates, because I'm going to do that once the servo is there so I can use a servo as a guide. Well I've assembled all 20 of the brackets to this stage. And now I've been going around adding one of the two top plates that the servo will eventually be bolted to. By working with all 20 of them in rotation, by the time I've finished doing one step on all of them, the first one is hard enough to start again with the next step. And now I just need to put the servo in there and get this in the right place. And I believe these will be a lot stronger than the wooden brackets. But firstly, I think 80,000 styrene is stronger than the 8th inch plywood they're using. And secondly, everything is firmly braced in all directions instead of relying on the tightness of the joints. Now all that remains to be done is to mount the servo. I have one here without the music wire activating rod yet. I found the right size drill for the screws that provided. I'm just putting two screws in. The other, the other two are not necessary because the servo is hard up against the side plate. Here's one that already has the rod in put it through the hole and of course I can't do it with it standing flat on the workbench well I've now mounted all 30 of the servos the 20 large ones in the brackets that I showed you how to make this morning and the 10 smaller ones 
in the 3D printed brackets. Now the easiest way to mount them under the turnouts is to start by attaching them temporarily with a piece of double sided tape. That way that will hold it in place while you get the screws organised. Well I'm back down at my workbench again. Here is one of those small servos with the 3D printed mounting bracket. And I've tried to install two of them in cramped locations. And I've found it virtually impossible to install the tiny screws under the layout where I'm fighting gravity and I can't get the tools in to pre-drill or anything like that. Nor can I use the powered screwdriver because the tip's too big. I've got to screw it in by hand. So what I'm doing is making supplementary mounting brackets. They're also made out of 80,000 styrene. I'm in the process of super gluing them onto the bases. There'll be a couple of locations where I've got to cut corners off to get them to fit. But even so, I'll still be able to get three of the four screws in. It'll be plenty strong enough and a lot easier than trying to attach these minute screws. So I'm just using this fairly thin cyanide based glue. I've already glued my fingers to one of them. I'm just gluing them on like that. All the servos have now been installed over the entire layout. It's been a bit of a fight and a little bit frustrating. I had to learn JMRI in order to program the um, Tam Valley uh, decoder boards. Here's one of the temporary control panels. Let's have a look underneath the layout and see what it all looks like. Here's one of the boards. Each one controls four servos. The, the servos plug in at the bottom set of contacts. The switches plug in at the middle set. Then there's two more sets for expansion. One of them I believe the customer is going to use for signaling and the other one for track occupancy de detection. Here's the back of the control panel. Here's one of the servos. Let's see if I can get the right button. So underneath the layout, the installation is pretty much the same as a regular tortoise machine. It doesn't provide for um, frog polarity, which is why I've been using these um, hex frog juices those are also from tan valley and they're really easy to use there are two inputs at one end of the board they get hooked up to the two bus wires it doesn't matter which way around the wires go and then these six terminals here we just put a wire to each of the six frogs you want to juice and it's really easy well i've had a quick tidy up getting most of the crap off the layout i've cut off or the excess length of the wires and I vacuumed everything. A few of the turnouts needed some adjustment but now I'm ready to give everything another thorough test. And with that in mind I've put a locomotive on the track. So let's try running it. Well, that concludes this test. Over the last few minutes, I've run the locomotive through both routes of each turnout and thrown all the turnouts from the control panel in both directions with 100% reliability. So I'm gonna call that good enough. <laughs>